So here we are, map number two of this best of five. Currently 1 0 up to one of these two players with some nice play. Game number one was pretty epic. Who's going to take it? Of course, a share of the remaining 450 euros on the line. First place gets 300, second place 150. So a lot of money on the cards. Spawning down in the bottom left hand position as the red Protoss player. Representing my insanity, Stardust. His opponent to the top left. The Blue Terran, also representing my insanity, Jack G. So let's recap game number one quickly. All right, so Jack G opened relatively normally. Uh, just a one gas, or one, one Rax into an expansion. Stardust went one game and he wanted to expand, but Jack G blocked it with an engineering bait for ages. So Stardust went a bit more aggressive with his Stalker rather than trying to clean it out quickly. Got a couple of kills. He then followed up with an Oracle, which got a huge number of kills. But his natural base was still delayed so far. So he took a greedy third once the Engineering Bay was gone. And Jack G didn't see it at first. He combated the Stalker as well. That did have Blink. And yeah, everything was okay there. But Jack G then found the third base. And because he had concussive shell, he was able to just stamp and kite the army of Stardust so well because the Zealots did not have charge and there was no form of splash. And eventually, because of that, Jack G took the game. Map number two now. Outer Rim is a huge map, the biggest in StarCraft ever. And that means exciting times. Exactly what comes down we'll have to keep an eye on, but for the moment, Stardust has just got the gateway out, Cybernetics core on its way, and in one gas, so it's not suggesting he's going super tech heavy. Jack G though, he's gone for a Reaper. He can poke and prod and harass with this, and it would be especially dominant if the Protoss player had opted for a Nexus first, because one of the big characteristics of this map is the fact that you've got a base inside your main. There's no other entrance to this natural base apart from this ramp to your main as well. So a lot of players, because it's so big and because you've got that very easy to defend base, do go very greedy on this map. And that's why quite a lot of players try to punish that. Second Reaper also coming through. The first one was already discovered. Oh, sorry, the SCV is already discovered. That's not the second Reaper. That's only the first Reaper. I correct myself. But now he knows the Reaper's going to probably come on head down. Um, where even is he hiding? Where is this Reaper? No, the Reaper's not even coming down. The Reaper's just chilling here. He's like, what? You, oh, you want me to attack? Yes. Yes, that's what I want to do. So, down comes the Reaper now. He's going to be trying to have a little bit of fun. Um, ideally, just going to look to pick off... Any Zealous or anything that poke around. Any probes maybe trying to put down a proxy. Warp Gate Tech is on its way. Jack G is starting up a second command center. I'm really interested by his decision to make it here. As opposed to actually down at the natural base. Because unless I'm missing something I don't see there being a benefit to it. The Reaper can beat the Zealot pretty well because it can kite it. But the Stalker will stop the Reaper being able to do much else. The Bunker being up though will help. The Reaper and... Two marines in there, just start chipping away, should prevent any further aggression. Second barracks coming through, of course double marine production is occurring. Back at home, Stardust has his second gas now just taken, but isn't attempting to get a natural base. Mothership Corps is now up, and that actually, now I get it. This command center is being built in the main, because otherwise a Mothership Corps could come in and snipe off the SCV. Time warp being used, that's a really interesting time warp, it's mainly just to make sure this Mothership Core is able to escape without dying. The Stalker and Zella though have made it up into the main base. This is a bold move for the Marines. We're back. And SCV is having to be pulled to deal with. The Stalker dies though. The Mothership Core also getting very low. The Time Warp is gonna save it. Boom. Nice control. Command Center finished up though. And yet again Stardust is a little bit behind in expansion timing. But what he has is a proxy Stargate. If at first your Oracle does good damage when it had to come from the other side of the map. Let's try building it next to my opponent's base. And maybe it'll do great damage. Tech Lab is now up. The Marine count, relatively high though. Up at 5. So, as long as Marines still getting produced two at a time, then actually there shouldn't be too much problem for Jack G defending this, as long as he's on the ball. He probably won't scout the fact there's a Stargate there though, and that's problematic. Oh, the Mothership Core for Stardust goes down. That's quite a big loss at this stage. He won that Mothership Core. Not only for Vision, but for the energy banking. With it going down, obviously it's the gas loss, the mineral loss, and the energy loss. 
Stargate nearly finished, and Jack Team moving out. This is the bait, probably a Folk Nova Charge. And this move out is going to be a bit of a disastrous timing, because he's also rallying the rest of the Marines over, leaving nothing back at home to defend. An Engineering Bay is on its way. The Natural Bay is floated down, but of course the Oracle is nearly done. So a Missile Charge won't be able to finish, because the Oracle would just snipe off any SCV building it for pretty much instantly. Stardust back at home, though, doesn't really have too much. His Mothership Core... It's only at 60 energy, so this could actually be fairly close. The Oracle, though, starting to get some good damage. Five, six worker kills already. Should get at least eight or nine. Um, racks up a few more. His energy is quickly running out, though, so that's what he's got to be careful for. A Marauder is also on the map, but he'll take a lot of beating, and the Oracle now have energy with 12 kills. But over at Stardust Space, Marines and a Marauder coming up. That Mothership Core still 25-odd energy away from a folk Nova charge. The Stalker's having to do a lot trying to kite this. The one Marauder doing a lot to help. Probe's being pulled. Loss is getting taken on both sides. The Oracle coming back in, but a missile turret is finished, so he's allowing a bit more damage to be done. Probe's being killed. The Reaper coming over. Both sides taking quite large losses. The second Marauder, though, should help against these Stalkers. Another Oracle coming on through, but remember, there's a missile turret up now, which makes the defense a bit easier. The Stalkers still playing very passively, but with four Stalkers now and a Mothership Core up against two Marauders, the Stalkers should easily win this fight. The Oracle coming back through though, should be able to snipe a couple of units, there isn't enough Marines back at home yet to actually stop this, so the odd SCB is going to die. In total, it's 12 workers killed compared to three, Jackie only killing three workers of starter so far. Marines dying as well, keeping the reinforcement numbers low. That Oracle only with two energy left. One energy isn't going to get the kill before it runs out and gets killed by a Widow Mike. Nice work there by Jack G. A third Oracle is coming through though now for Stardust, who is up 34 to 27 workers. His Marauder though is getting chased down, uh, so Stardust is going to get another quick kill there if he's lucky, but has to back out. And it's really the high ground that's being so beneficial. The Mothership Core needs to come over to grant that vision, but... In the recent patch, remember, the Mothership Core's vision range has been nerfed. Blink is not researched, nor is it on its way. Instead, Stardust just adding in... Um, oh, he was going for a double forge, and he is going to just get the single forge in the Robotics Bay instead, so getting some splash damage. The Oracle came back for some reason. Um, he's got a lot of energy banked up. Time Warp being used at the natural base, just trying to prevent a little bit of mining. Of course, slowing down these SCVs does cause a hit to mining income. There was a Widow Mine in position, but that's on cooldown at the moment. So if Jack G does get attacked in the near future, that'd be a problem. But it's his main base could be the target. The Oracle is still floating around. Needs to attack in the middle, ideally. That's the safest place for him to go. Comes around the back. This is also very safe. There is a missile turret up, but a couple of SCBs get killed. Two kills in total there, but the main is still vulnerable. Lost mining time. Has to be factored in. Stardust. Immortal on its way out, but no Colossus yet. The Robotics Bay only just finished. The Oracle skirting away, getting to safety since those Widow Mines are a bit of a threat, or Widow Mine is a threat. Would one shot the Oracle. And still things going pretty much safely for Stardust. He's only up by five workers now, so with the two mules, that means Jack G is slightly up on income. And that's frustrating. Jack G also going for a nice drop here. Interestingly, focusing the Nexus directly, and it's worth noting that with Photon Overcharge, that takes a lot, but most of Jackie's attention coming up in the main base as he moves up with that medevac and a few units, using some great pickup and drop micro on the Marauder, trying to keep it alive. Pushes back another one of those Stalkers. A final Stalker dies. A Colossus is about to pop out, but Jackie doesn't have enough stuff to continue this push on, so the Colossus will help. Workers killed, 8 to 14. Pretty much the same now, however Jack G, as I previously mentioned, does have those mules which should give him a decent boost to his economy. He's mining about 500 more minerals per minute. The Marauder's coming up yet again, the Medivac gets taken out, did get one unit out, but it's the Colossus without extended thermal lancets in some difficulties because the Marauders equal its range, kill it quickly. More Marauders coming up behind, the Stalker's taking some damage, the Medivac pretty much out of energy so nobody healing anything up. Some pick up and drop micro being utilized there. Again, trying to just keep that alive as long as possible. An Oracle comes back, trying to help the defense, but losing that Colossus is frustrating because overall resources lost are now pretty much the same. Stardust losing a hundred more resources, but the work account is still equal. And while this work account keeps equal, Jack G has the better economy because of mules. Jack G also is securing up a third base. It's half done. 
He's continuing on with this aggression, moving now into the natural base, and this is a fair few units. He can pick off a couple of probes fairly easily. Gonna have to pick up and get away though, as of course the Oracle and the Colossus comes back, but he gets to safety. Couple more f free worker kills, and he actually gives Jack G a small lead. He's moving into the natural main base as well, after dropping the natural. So he's multi prong attacking, hitting multiple bases simultaneously. And while only a pylon goes down, that does depower two gates. Which is annoying, it hurts Stardust's production for another 25 seconds. Jackji adding in a Viking. That's ready to start dealing with the Colossus. Gonna need a few more than three though to deal with two Colossi. Extended Thermal Lance has not been researched. It's not complete and it's not being researched either, so the Marauders do still equal the range of the Colossi. Jackji is definitely in a better position this game because of this third base specifically. It gives him such a greater income than that of his opponent. Not only because he's got more SCVs coming out, or because he's got an additional mule. But scrap that thought. In comes an engagement now. Force field on the ramps, good. The Vikings trying to get a couple of shots off, but aren't actually able to clear out any of either of those Colossi as of yet. So Stardust holds for the moment, and Jack G gonna have to retreat back. But as I was saying, this third base has an additional mule because of the orbital bug, but also it means that the worker split between the different bases is greater for Jackji, and so he's not oversaturated at either base, whereas Stardust is heavily oversaturated at both of his. Jackji baiting down these stalkers with a factory, gets a kill on one of them, that's always nice. The Viking count, back down to two, but two more about to pop out. These Vikings are essential for dealing with the Colossi. Jackji currently up. 139 to 111 supply, but the Colossus count looking quite sizable now for Stardust, who's also researching his extended thermal lance and the plus one attack. So he's gonna have one one upgrades up against 1-0 of Stardust at the moment. Of Jack G rather. Stardust losing a couple of zealots here. But Jack G, it's his economy that is really his crowning jewel. He's mining roughly about three. 400 more resources per minute than his opponent while losing less always gonna be good but Stardust now he's expanding down to a third he's got those four Colossi remember and that gives him a good amount of splash damage the Viking count starting to look a bit more intimidating six on the field more coming out and that's always frustrating one no Marauder has discovered the Stargate gonna get working on that trying to knock it out meanwhile clearly Jack G expecting a ghost, oh, expecting a high Templar transition as he starts up the Ghost Academy. Still being quite aggressive. Ideally, Jack G wants to knock out Stardust third before it gets up and running. If he stops that, it's pretty much game there, even if it's not instantly over. Because Stardust won't have any economy. But in comes now Jack G. It's got a nice spread on units. The Vikings working through these Colossi. There are many Stalkers to contend with that, so Jack G just backs out. Two of the Colossi getting taken out. Three and four also die. And with that, Stardust gets annihilated. No stalkers to deal with those Vikings. The Oracle dies too. GG is cool. And Jack G is 2 0 up in this best of five and one map away from taking that additional 150 euros, 300 euros in total, over his teammate Stardust.